English teachers have read it. What is the most disturbing story slash assessment a student has ever submitted? English teacher here. Had an 8th grade student write a my life at this moment letter to themselves that they write at the beginning of the year and read to themselves at the end. I always have a rule that they get full credit if I can just see writing on it and see its coherent English. Though if they definitely don't want me to read it, they should staple it and it'll just look for writing. I had a girl who went over the top to look, act, sound, and be a boy. She wasn't trans, so I was a bit confused on how exactly she wanted to be viewed, so I just pretended she was tomboyish. She was also insanely defiant to her male teachers, and I worked my ass off to build a relationship with her. She wouldn't have it, though I was as kind as I could be. Anyway, the time of year came for me to pass back their letters. By this time, this girl had been moved to a digital learning lab and had been isolated from the gen pop. I passed all the letters out and found hers had been left unstapled, though I didn't remember reading it or noticing it wasn't sealed. Curiosity overcame me, so I opened it. My heart broke when I read her rather detailed desire to be away from her stepdad by the end of the year and her goal for that year was to escape the godforsaken hellhole. Long story short, that letter ended up being used in court to put her stepdad away for raping her viciously for many years. I felt bad for her, but hopefully she's been able to move on, though I doubt it. The description was pretty rough of what he did to her. Had a student submit a paper about growing up with an addict teen brother. He had the room next to her, and sometimes when getting clean the parents would lock him in his room and he would have raging withdrawals. She was very young, so I imagine there was a lot of medical care and therapy going on that she didn't know about. She just remembered that her brother was screaming and crying in the next room and she would sit in her closet all night long terrified he was going to break through the wall and get her. It was such a heart-rending story, and it made me view what families go through in such a different light. Second-hand account from colleague, submitted during workshop in her undergraduate non-fiction writing class. Story was about 18 pages, and was submitted by a 50 h male. Talks about a 12 year old girl who is not the man's daughter, but belongs to him and his wife. Talking about how they like to stroke her, and caress her naked body, and make her eat things out of their hand. They put collars on her, and constantly refer to her perfect hairy posse and so forth. The rest of the class read the story for workshop, and in disgust and horror emailed professor colleague who immediately cancelled the workshop and contacted administration about the student. The thing is, everyone was so shocked by the pedophilic nature of the story that no one got to the very last line in which it is revealed that the girl is a cat. Obviously the student was looking for some sort of reaction, which he got. Someone wrote fanfiction of her, and Kermit the Frog and I've not been the same since edit, I forgot to mention I teach college English. This class was freshman seniors. Students were annotating old news articles about a very famous axe murderer from the late 1800s. One student includes an annotation about how the article reminded her of her father. She helpfully included his name for me to google, and yep. That is how I found out my student's dad is literally an axe murderer. Second place goes to a student who wrote from the pov of the Zodiac Killer for a creative writing assignment. It was incredibly well written. If it hadn't been, it honestly might have not been so disturbing. But being in the killer's head as he ties up and stabs young couples to death. No thanks. Oh, and last week someone submitted a horror story in creative writing. I swear to god, she could be a writer for saw movies. The deaths were graphic and gruesome man. Creative? I had to take breaks while reading it because I'm pretty squeamish. It might get buried, but I need to chime in. Mostly in the hopes that this student finds my comment and knows how much his story stuck with me. The first paper assignment of the semester was to write about life at the university through a sociological lens. This guy who was social, well liked, in a frat turned in this shocking story. He was writing about how hard his life was. How he had to scrounge for meals from the trash, while seeing all the other students eat happily in the dining halls. He described how he'd seen his friends struck by cars on the winding mountain roads on campus. I was so taken aback, and I kept reading anxiously to see if his story would take a turn. A squirrel. 
The student was writing from the perspective of a squirrel. This kid was a genius. I told him later how impressed I was, and he shrugs in a very bro way, stating that's the worst thing I've ever read if you see this, Matt. That's still my favorite paper by a student. Not an English a teacher, but when I was in junior college I was a tar for a psych instructor and I read and graded essays. There was an assignment for students to create an experiment where they trained themselves to create a habit by rewarding themselves after the task think have love. One male student wrote about his experiment he chose to train himself to masturbate more often, and his reward was masturbating, and he wrote about it in detail. Very sustainable system, but so weird to submit to your instructor. I have my HS students write a defining moment memoir about a moment where their lives changed in a significant way. I generally see some stories about childhood abuse and things of that nature, where I make sure our social work team is aware of their claims, they are getting support, and that's basically it. However, I did once get a story about the first time a girl in my class had smoked marijuana. Except, the whole thing was written with a weed anthropomorphized as a beautiful woman named Mary that she met, and took on a beautiful all night date. This thing was about 3 pages long and graphic, we are talking full anatomical descriptions of lesbian sex as an analogy for the experience of getting high for the first time. It just kept going and going, and it was extremely well written to the point that I was really uncomfortable reading it, and had to put it away. The worst part is she was so excited for me to read it, and came in the next day like did you read it? Did you like it? I'm super proud. And I had to basically say, yeah it's super well written, but honestly I just can't be reading something like that written by one of my students. I had a junior write a memoir in her daily journal about getting graped by two other students. This was 7 years ago, and I still get emotional when I think about it. She was always super quiet and a great student. She wasn't aware that the journals would be turned in, and she begged me not to say anything to her parents. I spent a lot of time making sure she got the help she needed. She's doing much better now. She's an RN in a local hospital and she took care of me a year or so ago, when I was in the ER. Uh. This happened to my girlfriend in high school let's call her Kate. We dated junior year, and one day after school Kate confided in me that she had been graped as a freshman by two other boys. I couldn't understand why she was telling me, but I tried to be supportive and urged her to tell her parents. I didn't really know what to do, but I knew she would lock up emotionally if I prid her too much. Then a few days later I found out from Kate that her teacher had given her the same type of journal assignment as Opus. The teacher read the journals. Kate thought they were private and the teacher went to the counselor. Kate was afraid I would find out from someone about the journal. Obviously this wouldn't happen, since counselors and teachers do not share this sensitive information. So she wanted to tell me first. We continued to date for a year after that, and it was nice to watch her learn how to cope with what had happened, after she was able to get the help she needed. Basically a manifesto about how the student felt ostracized from the school, and how he wanted revenge. This was a community college, and he was a freshman. Over the semester, I could tell he struggled, yet he was also insanely talented. Some other students in the class bullied him in my presence, and let's just say I didn't tolerate that at all. I spent extra time talking to him, and trying to help him one on one. One day, he turns in an assignment talking about his desire to exact revenge for his marginalization. He was triggered when everyone on his floor conspired to trick him to go outside at night in the middle of the winter, then they locked him out of the dorm. Arseholes, I spoke with him immediately about it, and he assured me it was just hyperbole. Regardless, I did have to notify my supervisor. I also spoke with his rap but the rap couldn't care less. The student ended up dropping out shortly after this. We stayed in touch for a bit, but after a while, I don't know what happened to him. He was probably the smartest student I had in that class, yet he couldn't make it because of his own personal problems and torment from other students. Ugh. I was working with a small group of year 7 students, and we did this exercise where the kids had to create a story using a randomly assigned setting, character and theme. So this one boy ends up with a war zone, a princess and unrequited love. He proceeded to turn these innocuous prompts into a hilariously messed up story. Set during World War 2, it's told from the perspective of the princess of the UK, 
who wakes up on a battlefield to find Nazis shooting her. Suddenly someone behind her kills her attackers. She turns around to see her rescuer, and it's Hitler. In fear, she runs into a medical tent, Hitler in close pursuit. In the tent, she decides to confront Hitler, but, upon locking eyes with him, realizes he's the most beautiful man she's ever seen, falling in love immediately. Hitler, however, walks right past her and kisses a passing nurse. Furious and jealous, the princess of the UK kills the nurse in a fit of rage, then flees the medical tent, returning to the battlefield before the sad and baffling conclusion to the story, and then I died. So not disturbing as such, but certainly unexpected. We have middle schoolers put together a portfolio at the end of the year of all their readings logs and the essay they are most proud of, and a revision of their essay that they think could improve the most. It's a big culmination project that includes a letter at the beginning to the grader, where they need to explain what they've learned, and how their habits have changed, and stuff like that. Easily some of the funniest shoot I've ever read in those letters, and I still have pictures of my favorite intros, but the most disturbing one was about a boy who explained in detail that he broke his habit of not doing his reading by reading while he takes shoots. Maybe not exactly what you were looking for, but I'm an ESL teacher. One class, we were talking about different holidays and how we celebrate them. This one student was trying to explain Mother's Day, but didn't know the exact name of it. When I asked him to explain the holiday, so I could tell him the name we use, he said, it's the day where I pleasure my mother. Similar experience here, helping a Japanese friend in college write a creative paper for her ESL class. The assignment was to write a description of a common piece of earth technology from the perspective of an alien who had never seen it before. She chose a telephone and set up a situation where the alien was watching a human man talking to his girlfriend. But the alien misunderstood and thought the girlfriend lived physically inside this little weird shaped box. Her alien asked, how could he be in love with someone in a box? Only my friend got the English wrong. She ended up asking, how could he make love with someone in a box? That was an awkward conversation when I told her what Shed said. To the question, if you could have anything in the world, what would it be? A 17 year old replied a gun, so that I could kill people I hate. Okay th. Not a teacher, but when I was in primary school we had a student read out a story about killing her whole family and then herself. Like a week later her sister went missing, and they still haven't found her. It's been years but it still haunts me to this day. TW. Child abuse I was teaching a year 9 class 13 over 14 year olds. We had spent a few weeks on creative writing skills and their final assessment was to write a piece with the title back quote trapped. Most kids wrote about being in prison, or trapped on a mountainside or something, but one girl wrote about being trapped in a bedroom, while her dad molested her. It was quite graphic and some of the things she said just seemed surreal. I really didn't think it was made up. I went to see the school's safeguarding officer who made copies of the piece, but said that I had to give feedback as normal, and not to tell the girl that I'd escalated it. I found this really hard, as I thought that it was probably a cry for help, and she was reaching out to me, and I hated that she might think I'd completely missed it, and just treated it as a normal story. The police and social services were involved, and it turned out that the story was true. The girl and her five siblings were removed from the home, and placed into care. It also turned out that her parents were having a lot of parties and were allowing her to be abused by other people. I left that school a few months later. In the following years, I got married and had a baby. A couple of months ago I was collecting my daughter from daycare and the girl from my class was on a college placement there. She's 18 now and getting her qualifications in childcare. She looks well and seems happy. It was so good to see her. So glad she got out. I used to teach kinda, and asked students to draw and write a sentence or two about their week to turn in as homework. One girl turned in a drawing, that she later told me her mother had sent her from prison. I don't remember the exact phrasing anymore, but it had a lot of phrases like you're ugly, you're dumb, I don't miss you, and stupid girl. She was so happy to turn it in, I don't think she had any idea what it really said, and only knew her mother had sent it to her. I teach English and ENL. 
One of my major assignments I give to my students in the beginning of the year is a realistic fiction short story. One particular student submitted his realistic fiction story about surviving a grape. It was quite vivid and detailed which made it difficult to read. When I pulled him aside and asked him about it, he just said it was a story and shrugged it off. I told the admin and tried to get the guidance counselors to talk to him about it but it just made him resistant to speaking and discussing about it. In the end, he was just emulating what he saw on Netflix's at the time and wanted to write in the perspective of a grape survivor after watching 13 Reasons Why. Smart kid but that story was very difficult to read through due to the nature and details that were presented in his work. Had a kid busily writing something in science class that had nothing to do with what everyone else was working on. It was an anti-Jew slash LGBT slash pop manifesto. Sort of an argumentative essay on why it should be perfectly normal if not expected to kill those particular groups. I turned it into admin. They met with parents and he was withdrawn the next day. Not a teacher, but I was going through my old old papers my recently deceased mother had saved. Well. As a joke, I handed in a descriptive story about Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer where a snowflake created a massive short circuit and caused his head to explode and started a chain reaction taking out each of the reindeer in succession as the reaction worked its way back to the big guy. Thus ruining Christmas. Teacher note, disturbing. Please see me. My mom showed me the poetry assignment that got me sent to the counselor in 4th grade. It was called the Axe of Evil and was about an axe that belonged to a farmer who used it to cut the head off chickens every day. Eventually the axe got fed up with this and came to life and cut the farmer's head off. If I recall the rhyme scheme was similar to a lime rig. So it came off as a very jolly and light that it story at first glance. Not an English teacher and nothing submitted to me has ever been considered disturbing, but I did go to high school with a guy who submitted a creative story in which he described coming to school with multiple guns and shooting up the place. It made national news. He's in the military now. Edit. I am a teacher but... I'm an English teacher, and I've had a ton of these. I even have instances where, instead of actually writing the assignment or assessment, they go on a long confession. There's something about me as a teacher, lots of my students wind up telling me some pretty disturbing things. Once I had students write on the prompt, write about your biggest fear. One student, who'd been in Thai refugee camps as had much of the class, wrote about being in camps and being afraid to use the bathroom at night because he was worried he or his brothers would get shot. He then ended the essay, almost as an afterthought, with, I'm also afraid of taking tests. I had another student who wrote an essay about her boyfriend breaking up with her and how she doesn't want to be here anymore. Another student wrote an essay about starvation and its effect on the body, complete with graphic details about death from starvation. Another student wrote about her mom's new boyfriend and how she didn't like him because he would look at her all the time. This student's English wasn't great, but when I talked to her, I found out she meant that he was watching her while she was getting dressed in her room. Another student wrote a detailed and accurate description of the history of the AK-47, which I suppose isn't disturbing in and of itself, but I'm still keeping an eye on this particular kid. Former student and it was an exam, rather than an essay. To preface, I have severe dissociation and mental health which whilst better now, was completely off the rails in college. I had to sit a sociology exam and it just been placed on a medication that turned me batshoot for about 2 hours. During the exam, I saw the teacher teleporting around the room, thought I could type on paper I was informed I was sat there literally pushing invisible buttons. When I did write, it came out as complete gibberish for about 6 pages, mumbled what can only be described as utter shoot for a while, before I promptly fell asleep. As you can imagine I was pretty quickly frog marched to student services, to see the mental health advisor. She was great about it, and laughed her ass off. The teacher was freaking terrified though, and I don't think he ever looked me in the eye after that. <laughs>